A gruesome triple murder 19 years ago left emotional scars on the people of Humboldt, Nebraska. Three people killed, including Brandon Tina, a 21-year-old transgender Nebraskan who the convicted murderer now sits on death row for. In this exclusive special report, 1011's Chad Silver speaks with a man now facing execution. Most everyone who lived in Nebraska in 1993 remembers hearing about the murders. John Lauder at the center of it all, accused of shooting and killing Brandon Tina, Lisa Lambert, and Philip Devine. The court ruled Lauder and Marvin Neeson raped and killed Brandon after learning he was actually a she. The other two just happened to be there at the time. Lauder has maintained his innocence. For his plea deal, Neeson was sentenced to life in prison, Lauder to death row. And that's where he's been for the past 16 years, waiting for his final punishment, but hoping for an appeal. Do you think that you will be executed? Well, there was a time I'd, I'd say no, but, you know, I mean, I don't know. I mean, that's one thing now, I, and I, I don't sit there and say no to that possibility. I mean, now, with the way things have went, especially here of late, I mean, it's clearly, you know, getting more and more that it could be a possibility. The appeals aren't going his way, first denied by the Federal Court of Appeals and then the U.S. Supreme Court in March. As he sits here at the Tecumseh State Correctional Institution, he knows his time is almost up. What is it like knowing that, you know, every day you go about and it's possible that you could get a call tomorrow and it's someone from the state and they said, okay, this is the day that you're going to be executed? Well, I mean, I, I don't, I don't look at it in that terms. I just look at it, you know, uh, you know, I got an appeal that I got in front of the court, and I, mean, I know that that could go one way or the other, and and then I know after I get to a certain stage, there's that possibility that a date could be set, you know, but I know that ain't etched in stone. Are you ready to to die? Unless there's, you know, of course, uh, some kind of mental, you know, defect in them. Everybody has a will to live, you know. Everybody's going to fight, you know, with every breath they have to live. So I don't have that mental defect. So, of course, I'm going to, you know, fight for, you know, every last breath that I have to, you know, prove my innocence and get out of here. Lauder's push to prove his innocence faces a hurdle that he might not be able to cross. During their trials, Neeson testified that Lauder was the one who pulled the trigger. Then, 12 years later, he changed his story and said he murdered the three. But because of a three-year statute of limitations passed by the state legislature, Neeson's admission isn't allowed in an appeal without DNA evidence. The way they have it set up, DNA, the way they tore it down by the time it got passed was that DNA would be the essentially the gateway and once you had DNA then you could put all the evidence that supported that DNA. Do you think that you will be exonerated? I think if I was to have a hearing, if I was to have a full-fledged hearing where I could put on the evidence, I, could, I think I could prove my innocence. I really do. But the statute has been on the books since the early 1900s and there's no sign it'll change anytime soon. Reporting in Tecumseh, Chad Silver, 1011 News. This is only part one of Chad Silver's death row interview. Tonight at 10, John Lauder talks about lethal injection, his portrayal in the movie Boys Don't Cry, and how he wants people to remember him on his if his ex execution day ever comes. Tomorrow morning, you'll be able to see the full interview on the Web Extras page of 1011now.com.